I'm Wes Gollum, the New Hampshire Energy Geek, and I am here today with Josh Borden from Derry, and please tell us a little about what you do in Derry, and then uh, sure. we can go from there. Well, it's nice to have you here. Thanks. Um, so my name is Joshua Borden. I serve, I'm in my second term uh, as a Derry Town Counselor. Um, I represent uh, all of Derry. We have, you know, a few district counselors and at-large counselors, and I was you know, fortunate enough to be elected twice as an at-large counselor. Uh, some of my interests in dairy and, and some of the needs in dairy are uh, to a reduction in taxes. Um, so I've been working extremely hard at trying to do just that. Um, during my uh, re-election bid, I have a couple of young children, so I wasn't really sure if I was gonna run. And during my re-election, I was thinking about running or not, um, I made a decision that I'd have to come up with something to really make it worth my time. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it had to be really important to take away from my family's time. Um, and so, long story short, I'm taking my six month old at the time to our pediatrician in Londonderry. And on, the, uh, on, on one of the tables, I notice a magazine Green Energy Times. Times. Yep. So I was born in Vermont, or I grew up in Vermont, mm -hmm. so I'm green energy, you know. And I pick it up and I start reading along and I see, uh, I start learning about net zero. Believe it or not, three years ago, I really had no idea about what that was. And I see that Montpelier and Cambridge, Massachusetts, and all these different uh, communities and cities in New England, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and Vermont are aggressively attacking uh, green energy solutions. And I thought, you know, there's two ways to think about it. There's the climate change impact mm -hmm. and there's the tax relief impact. Mm -hmm. um, well, for those of you who don't know, dairy is, you know, two to one Republican mm -hmm. and not all, but most Republicans aren't really um, or haven't been particularly interested in talking about climate change, which is fine. Everyone has their own opinion. That's a different argument for a different day. Um, but one thing I found that Republicans are interested in is reducing taxes and not just Republicans, but all people. So it dawned on me that what if dairy was able to rebrand itself and become a community that really led in New Hampshire from a solar perspective? And I started really thinking about and getting inspired by uh, this Green Energy Mountain Times and all the things that some of these other cities were doing. So the vision turned into surrounding myself with experts and important players from different um, boards in Derry and different organizations. Because one thing I know is if you're gonna get something accomplished, you've got to get you've got to get the right people in there. Not only do they need to be experts, but they need to be different people from different boards that can inspire others. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I, 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 I came up with a, I picked a group. Uh, the Net Zero Task Force has a mission that dairy will become net zero by the year 2025. Extremely aggressive. Some call it unrealistic, but we're on pace to do it. We're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, then I came up with uh, the, you know, picking the group of people: a member from the planning board, the town council, the school board, our high school, Pinkerton, um, the chamber of commerce, a member from the public. So the idea was to get all these different people so then they could go back and disseminate the information and the things that we we're working on and to build uh, momentum. Can uh, I stop you for one sure, second and ask a question? When you say net zero by 2025, mm -hmm. do you mean the town, municipality, energy consumption, or do you mean all consumption in the town? So it's a great question. Um, definitions are important. Net zero 2025 for dairy, what that means is 
for us, for our board, is the municipal, the government mm-hmm. side, the school side, K through eight, mm-hmm. and then our, our high school. Mm-hmm. So there's only so much things I, as a town counselor, can control. And that is, you know, my purview really is, is the municipal side. Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, Derry is in a uh, city and we're, we run as a city, but we're not a city. Um, so we we don't have control over the schools. Mm-hmm. They have their own school board. So I mm-hmm. have to inspire them. them. We have sure. to work with them. And then Pinkerton is a public private academy with a board of trustees that involves like surrounding communities that mm-hmm. attend. It's not just dairy. So again, mm-hmm. I, I can't just tell them what to do. We have to sure. We have to inspire them. So how is this? Is this a law? Is it a um, uh, the uh, net zero by 2025 what is the form of that yeah declaration so it's a goal essentially and who who adopted the goal I mean how did the town adopt the goal I guess is what I'm, I'm trying to ask so I asked I brought it up you know I ran on it mm-hmm. got reelected ex- you know extremely large numbers in my favor um, and so there was that going for the vision. The project, yeah. Um, and then once I was, you know, reelected, I was elected by my colleagues to serve as the town council chair, which allowed me to have more say uh, so at meetings. Let me get this. So you got a, a council full of Republicans and they elected you as chairman? Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is cool. Um, town politics, as some may or may not know, is supposed to be nonpartisan. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would consider myself more of a fiscally conservative, socially uh, accepting type of Democrat. Mm-hmm. I guess some of more of a blue dog, outside the box thinker. Um, you know, I'm, I care. I'm really trying to reduce taxes and I'm trying to maintain services mm-hmm. through creative solutions. And this solar uh, idea, this net zero idea, I mean, to me, it was it was low-hanging fruit Mm -hmm. it was easy Um, you just had to speak to my colleagues and to the community about in a language they could understand and that's we need to reduce taxes Mm solar is the key to doing that so I don't even need to talk about all the other benefits that others care about climate change and whatnot we're just trying to reduce our taxes and do it in an efficient manner so back to your question how did it how did it come out or come to be Basically, as chairman, one of the things I was able to put on the agenda was the idea of, um, of forming a net zero committee and then establish, in that committee, we established a vision, the goal of 2025, and then we went back to the council and asked them to back us, to adopt mm. it. And that council did, and they gave us a short, you know, I think it was a, a temporary status. You know, you have eight months, go out and you know, see what you can do and then come back to us. We'll see if, see how things are going. So, so we worked really hard as a net zero committee within that eight months. Um, and then we analyzed the schools K through eight. Uh, we analyzed Pinkerton Academy's electricity use and our own government's Mm -hmm. use. Um, and then we came to the conclusion that with my role on the council and with the possibilities of achieving things quicker, that we would start by focusing on uh, the municipal side of things. So our transfer station, it's the water- Water treatment facility. Water treatment facility. Okay. They, they use about $2 million worth of electricity a year. Mm-hmm. We started what we call small, but really it's, it's a very big um, project and we were able to get through and pass a, um, I wanna say it's, uh, and we'll, we'll get videos of it later, uh, a small solar field at the mm-hmm. transfer station. Um, so we actually passed that, implemented it. It's been going or producing energy for a year and it's, it's ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, it costs the taxpayers no money because of the way we set up. Um, Did you do a power purchase agreement? Yeah, it's a lease to own. Mm-hmm. Um, the panels are state of the art. They rotate with the sun. Okay, yeah. Um, Granite State Solar. Mm-hmm. They was, put mine in too. Was the uh, yep. 
the ins installer. Mm -hmm. um, so we started with that project. The reason we started there was because it was smaller compared to what we really wanted to go with. Um, and we needed to give the council and the community, we need to prove it, mm -hmm. a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. It's done that. We've, you know, probably been going for two, two and a half years now. We're now working on, or have been working on, uh, installing a one megawatt solar field at the transfer station, but on the old landfill, which is, um, it's capped. capped. Uh, it can't be used for anything. Um, so, excuse me. So we have, I wanna say 20 to 40 acres available. Um, I think for one megawatt, it takes like five, five acres. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in the process of going through public hearings. Um, we've already awarded uh, the RFP. Uh, we're in the process of negotiating uh, with, um, with the solar company uh, to build a solar field um, up to one megawatt. Now, one megawatt in our existing structure would, would end up saving taxpayers around 300 Fifty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually um, mm -hmm. off the budget. So out of, instead of spending two million, we'd be st spending around uh, one point six. Yeah, one point five, mm -hmm. one point six. Um, to get to net zero, we need a bigger solar field. Our expectations were never. Our hopes got up this year tremendously and our eyes grew large when the house and senate supported increasing the net metering caps to mm -hmm. five we wouldn't need to use all five we'd come at about four four and a quarter mm -hmm. of megawatts between the school pinkerman and the town but our eyes grew large because if had that passed had we could have achieved our goal ahead of schedule and it mm -hmm. and the path would have been easy and direct Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it didn't pass, and um, you know, the bottom line, we could have saved. Had it passed, we could have we could have saved taxpayers around a million dollars a year. So uh, that in that this that's cost a lot. in this community a million dollars a year. Correct is what you're saying. Correct. Okay, um, and it's unfortunate because you know, again, I guess philosophically, people want lower taxes. So when you get party that lowers taxes at the federal level, hooray, that's great, but what happens is it gets kicked down to the state level. And then when you get a party that lowers taxes at the state level, it gets kicked that's down. Great, yeah. But it gets kicked down to the local community. So what do we want to do as a society philosophically? <laughs> Essentially what you're saying is when you when you put down shift tax fighters in the in the federal offices and the state offices you're saying you want the local communities to have control over their budgeting that's that's a fine philosophy as long as we have the tools the creative tools to be able to uh to continue to keep taxes low but to continue to maintain services mm -hmm. maintain services so when they take out when they kick out the legs under us on solar it, and they downshift on all these other things, retirement for our first responders and our mm -hmm. public employees, when they cut school funding. I understand, yep. And we have a tax cap, so what are we going to do? We are in, I mean, it's desperation time. We're literally gonna have to close schools or close fire stations or, I don't know. This, the solar was our way to maintain services and to to hold the line on taxes or reduce it. And I'm not giving up hope. We still are gonna to get to our one megawatt and that's still gonna make a big difference. Hopefully I can work with the school, K-3 and Pinkerton to each get them to do one megawatt. So that'll get us to three tremendous savings, about three quarters of a million dollars. Um, but five would be, five would be nice. Mm. You know, yeah. so that's, Yep. That's kind of the story how we got here. My advice to really any public official on, you know, with 
Republican, Independent, uh, Libertarian, Democratic, whatever the party affiliation, whatever the philosophical affiliation or belief system, I mean, whoever's in office right now in some of these communities who are struggling like us, they have an opportunity to be a hero, to mm. leave a legacy behind. If mm. that's what they care about, they have a real opportunity. If they, if they want to make a tremendous difference, uh, they have an opportunity. And it's about, it can be about and only about reducing taxes. If, they, if they're having trouble looking in the mirror, if they're having trouble, you know, believing in the science of climate change, scrap it. Put it over there. Who cares? If they want to just focus on taxes, if that's what allows them to look in the mirror at night and look at their, their friends and feel good, focus on taxes. Because that's what we did here in Derry. And I guess what I would do, I'd be absolutely willing myself and the, um, you know, the chairman of our committee to, to go speak at a council or select board meeting. Um, I'm sure we could bring in either someone from Revision or Granite State or Amoresco, mm -hmm. some of the uh, reputable companies to speak and just make a presentation. You know, it wouldn't cost them anything but their time mm -hmm. as to show them some of the mistakes we made, but some of the, the wins we've had. So what, can you tell me about some of the mistakes you made? I mean, I, from a town council side, um, or as a town councilor, uh, originally, so it passed and we had a lot of forward momentum and then it came time to focus or to, um, uh, to approve uh, the final projects for the small array system we mm -hmm. put up. And we didn't invite the, um, the, the installer, the solar company, a representative from there. And so when it, you know, Prior, even though all the counselors were on board, when it came time to ask questions in front of the public, and some of those answers couldn't be answered, they ended up voting no, even though they knew in their hearts it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so so you not would have a preparation, not being prepared, not having you know the the experts there on the big night, cost us. Uh, fortunately. Um, one of the descending voters was willing to flip his vote so the very next meeting per the Roberts rules we were able to get it back on the agenda uh, and after hearing the presentation from the experts um, and being satisfied with some of those answers ended up flipping his vote and it, and it ended up passing 7-0 we have seven members on the council excellent so. and you're ahead of schedule yeah, I mean, it's, production. it's it's producing. There's been some, April was a bad month, but, mm -hmm. you know, July's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, some of the, the things I would recommend is to be conservative on your numbers and your projections. Um, even the most conservative numbers are still going to show a positive result financially. And when it... It's better to undersell yeah, and oversell. undersell and, it, right. and you'll over-deliver. And mm -hmm. again... This thing's a no-brainer. People can look like I mean, they can literally make a huge difference for uh, their residents financially. Mm -hmm. So, excellent. Yeah. So, what else are you doing, or what are your plans? Um, you know, both solar. Are you doing anything with efficiency with the town, with residents? With we're extremely lucky to have uh, a head of public works and or, or DPW, a guy named Mike Fowler, who's been, he's a veteran now, he's been there for quite some time, probably going on 15 years, uh, slowly installing uh, LED light bulbs mm -hmm. throughout the community. I think we have like, say, 60 mm -hmm. uh, light poles, you know, in our downtown and whatnot, maybe more. But he was doing a few at a time. And then during budget season, I had proposed, you know, why don't we do every light bulb in the community i think we save like sixty thousand dollars a year which breaks down to you know it's a couple pennies for the taxpayers but right. historically we keep going up that was you know it, it adds up a couple pennies mm -hmm. here and there they add up over time um so we were able to change the whole uh if there's only leds in dairy um uh, 
Um, we are willing to meet with any business, any real estate agent mm -hmm. across the state of New Hampshire, and mm -hmm. we will not, I mean, I'll go along, but uh, the, the experts, auditor experts, you know, the, the real experts mm -hmm. in our committee, they will go along and, and meet with them and explain and break down and help them figure out the finances on it to see if it makes sense. So it will cost them nothing but their time. Um, we did that with Tupelo Music Hall, mm -hmm. which had moved from London Dairy to Dairy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful venue. Yeah, sure They is. are 100% powered by solar. It's mm -hmm. all over their roofs now. Um, my, I mean, the owner's my friend, and he's do, he was doing very well anyway, but he's doing much better financially because, I mean, he just wiped an expensive bill right off his, right off his plate. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's big grants out there uh, for businesses and for real estate, you know, for uh, apartment owners. Mm -hmm. So. What's the uh, Throwback Brewery? Um, it's, a, it's out in Rye. Uh, and they're, oh, oh, the brewery. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're I, literally. They, yeah, I, I've been there. They made money. Mm -hmm. um, like this, this did not cost them anything because of the timing and the grants and just the way it all worked out. It's been, it's been some of the most exciting times in my political, we'll call it political career. Mm -hmm. um, it really, I'm really proud of what we're doing. Um, I have two young children and I, I definitely believe that someday they'll look back as well as other younger kids in our community and see that even though there's restraints and even though there's massive hurdles in this state compared to our neighbors that we're at least taking the initiative locally to do all we can um, and I'm really proud of that you should fact. be and, congratulations and I'm really proud of my again I know it's not partisan but my Republican colleagues um, for willing to look at what's best despite you know you know, it can be used as a political football by both mm -hmm. sides, but we're really focused here on dairy on rebranding ourselves. And this council works together so well. We have so much respect compared to like what's going on federally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're like, we're old school. We, mm -hmm. we argue, we hash things out, but we, it's never personal. And it's always focused on what's best for the community. And, you know, for this, for this council, we're to be able to move forward on solar, um, it's awesome. It's a good feeling. Great. Congratulations. You. You're doing a good job. You. you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. And uh, I really hope that a lot of communities will uh, look at dairy as a model, as one of the things, not just communities, as Dan said the other day, citizens are the most important um, position in a democracy. And I hope citizens will see what this can do yeah. and um, talk with their local leaders to find creative solutions thank you very much this is really been great yeah absolutely do you want to go uh I absolutely want to see the solar yep excellent we're on our way to the 86 kw solar installation located at the dairy transfer station it produces about 160,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a year this saves the town about twenty five thousand dollars a year these savings should pay for the array in about 10 years. This is the array that powers the, the uh, transfer station and the water treatment facility. Yeah, so this array here helps uh, defray some of the costs. It doesn't, it doesn't take out all of the, uh, the cost, but you know, with, our, with the addition of the one megawatt uh, solar field that we're hoping to, to put up uh, soon, um, that would get us most of the way there. Very good. One thing I think is extremely important to mention is um, really the trailblazers in projects like this. And Wes, I'm grateful for you because I know you have been passionate about this for decades. Um, when it wasn't uh, popular and you, you didn't back up, you, you kept moving forward. Uh, this facility 
behind me wouldn't be possible without guys like you. And I, I refer to as trailblazers. And there was a guy, uh, a friend, uh, a community member named Tom Minion, who unfortunately had passed away a few years ago, but he was one of the trailblazers in our community. He was so passionate about green energy and technology and really education to our young children. Um, was one of the original members of the Energy Conservation Committee, which now turned into, you know, grew into the Net Zero Task Force. Again, none of that would have been possible without guys like you, guys like Tom Minion. Um, so, you know, we, we appreciate it and uh, you know, keep the faith. We're going to keep moving forward and doing all we can to, uh, to reduce taxes in a sustainable manner. Excellent. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you.